Hello guys and welcome to another Run JB video. Today we are going to be taking a look at a game I have, um, well, mm, found after a long, long while of not playing at all. But before that, well, um, for all those questions that have been popping up for the last days, um, I couldn't put any commentary on my videos. I couldn't actually um, uh, use voice chat in when I was in in live stream with Sysrave. Um I had my family at home but last week, and uh, during the day there was a lot of noise because my nephews were he were here, um, thinking all kids and well, you know how how things are. And during the night I didn't want to wake them up, so. I simply couldn't edit anything, I couldn't do any other stuff that, than what I have done in the meanwhile. Um, I say that because, well, I have been receiving questions of uh, what's happening with the EU4 Let's Play. It's going to go on, don't worry. And why I wasn't using voice. And that's, basically, that's the reason. So, well, say that, let's go into the game. The game is called Over the Raids. And it's... Um, an Avalon Hill um, based uh, game. This actually was a board uh, strategy game and was ported into the PCs back in the 90s, in 1996, I think. Uh, it portrays the air war in Europe um, since 1943 until 1945 and has a campaign mode. It's, it's very entertaining. Uh, it's actually very good. There are some problems with, with this game, however, and those are related with the um, um, date it was published in. As I told you, it's a game that was around since the late 80s, I think, uh, the board game, and was ported into PC in 1996. And back in those days, there were a lot of really oh, terrible books about World War II aircraft and uh, airplanes, uh, especially German ones. Misinformation was everywhere and there were a lot of mistakes. There was very few interest in looking for actual source information instead of... Mm, I mean, people back then were writing books by basing them on other books. And things like what we are going to see happened. This is the airplane database. We go to Germany and we select the bf 9 k 4 You can see here fixed for Barguns two times 15 millimeters MG 151, one uh, 30 mm MK 103. Well, this is wrong. Uh, the K4 never carried these weapons, and no. The 15 millimeters, there was a, um, a try to put them on the calling of the BF109, but there was not enough uh, space, so it was never mounted there. And the 30 millimeter MK 103 didn't fit into the engine room of the of the 109K so it couldn't be mounted there there was actually a smaller version of the MK103 called MK103M which would have seen service in the K6 and beyond but the K4 never covered it and this is all originated in a book of the late 60s I think I think it was Preston's Actually, it was a book by Preston, not sure, but I think that that was it. The thing is that th th there was a mistake when they were transcribing data for the for the book, and they listed this ammo for the these weapons for the K4, and actually that was never <laughs> the, the case. This this never was the actual weapons of the of the plane. But what happened since then is that a lot of books that were published afterwards used that first book with the mistakes as a source. Instead of looking for actual German uh, sources, they were basing their um, books on other books. And of course, the result was that whatever mistakes the first generation of books had were translated into later books. And that's why a lot of books are crap about German plays of World War II, because they are based on nothing but other people who did the job. It's not primary source, etc. And this is a problem with this game because back then, I mean, by now, today, we all have um, easy access to original German source data of um, plane performance. But back in the day, it wasn't so readily available. And um, the designers of the, of the game, of the board game, 
uh, decided to go with the American books uh, on German planes and they did a atrocious job. I mean, it's not just that. If you go to the uh, BF uh, Focus Plane in the, the, the 13, look at this. A uh, climb of 3,379 feet, feet per minute when actually this plane could almost almost hit uh, 5,000 feet per minute at sea level. So the thing is, even then, I mean, there are some mistakes here and there in the in the plane's stats. Well, you have to live with that. It's okay. Uh, the thing is, it's very interesting, and you're going to see it. I'm not going to explain how the game is actually. I'm going to just play a fast game, and you already know what I'm going to to take, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to take a focal point any. Select the fight. You can. Um, I mean, there are uh, several um, scenarios you can play. Um, there are several um, single dog fights you can play. There is a campaign for its nation, um, etc. And you can actually edit your own battles to fight them. So it was summer of 1943. Okay, that's cool. I was playing in a standard formation with my group of um, let's put a couple, just two. Focus fight any A6s? Why not? At let's say 15,000 feet. Nah, yeah, that's it. My pilots had excellent training. Back then, uh, German pilots were all very, very good. We met Heron, a standard formation of two. P47, nah, but the D1. The pilots had good training. Okay, that's cool. So let's go with this. So this is your... Okay, they have a removed. Uh, okay, this is your your map. This is a 2D representation of a 3D game. Uh, these battles are actually fought in three dimensions. So you see the positions in um, well in 2Ds, but you also have to keep track of altitudes. How do you do that? Well, here down here you have a um, um, representation of the plane that you put the mouse over. And here you can see the altitudes where they are. When you have a plane selected, right now I have this one selected, uh, you get um, the idea of where he is. He's at 15,000 feet. And the little numbers are relative altitudes. Zero means he's at the same altitude as me. Minus one means that he's one unit below me. One unit in, in this game is 300 feet. Uh, this one is at the same altitude as me, so yeah. This is your pilot, this is the experience from zero stars to three, three stars. The higher, the later they move, and the later, later that you move, the better. View of the weapons, where you can select your ammunition, save weapons, or fire with them when you have something inside, of course, but right now we don't. Um, here you have the information of uh, how your plane will be behaving after your move has been completed. So, for instance, if I go in a break turn, you see that I end up level at the same altitude, but much slower because I'm in a very, very, very sharp turn. If I go higher, if I go lower, they tell me how I'll do. And this is a representation of how the plane will be, the plane attitude at the end of the turn. Right now is level and straight at the end of the turn. Doing this will end up looking downwards and bang it to the left. You can also adjust the bank if you want. This here is the throttle from this red light here, which is web, down to air brakes. You can use your throttle. And that's basically it. That's basically it. So let's start. These two have already moved. Why well, yeah, see I selected from, from this, but well, whatever. Let's move. All right. These two are going towards me. You can see they are banked to the left and at 300 miles per hour, more or less, both of them. So if I'm a little bit of a bastard, I can do this, which is offering my back to this guy for the next turn. Well, I loop around with this and go behind them. So let's try to set this trap. Work it like a charm, this guy is behind us. 
266 miles per hour I'm much faster so he won't be able to shoot and this one I'm going to loop with in this direction I'm, I'm going up and up the top I'm rolling and going out in this direction so instantly I have an advantage over these two guys all right let's this guy is banking left which I don't like the idea probably this guy I'm going to try to depends on what this one does um, okay well this guy has to keep on going alrighty well one of the things you can see here I just did a very sharp climb you can't go with from a um, very sharp climb into level you can only advance one step at a time so if you are in a direct dive you can only go into a shallow dive if you are in a shallow dive you only can go level or mm, power dive if you are level you can go slightly up and slightly down but not directly up and down and if you are pointing upwards you can go level or directly upwards so one step at a time this is moving at 287 miles per hour is going level so I'm going to straighten up behind him at around 3000 feet over him and already pointing the right way slower than him but I'll be higher so I'll be faster after a while all right you can see that and now you can see here well you can actually this is good you can actually go into a dive well I guess it depends on how fast the the, 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 the climb was but yeah let's dive a little bit we'll set up the plane behind this P47 still much higher than him so still don't have a shot but that's cool besides this guy still hasn't moved probably he's going to try to get me in, in from the side we'll see that okay let's keep on going with this guy let's keep on going with this guy and now we are set up perfectly behind them and now it's a matter of which of both of them will try to kill mm, this is lower so probably I'll try to get this one first keep on going with this one okay let's go like this like this I'm going to bank my plane to the left because I'm going to turn into this guy the next one 377 much faster than him keep on going alrighty dive minus one is breaking to the le right so he's doing a turn here I'm going to bank my plane to the other side this is the power of the 190 has an excellent roll rate you can do this with all the planes some planes have a very bad roll rate and you can you have a very limited choice of, of banking options so yeah let's keep on going there you go perfectly set up behind them this one is a 300, 336 this one is a 351 and this is banking towards the left okay now if you don't have any experience in your pilot you can only fire with blaze away blaze away is a very ineffective way to fire it's a lot of ammo and can jump your your weapons if you have um, one star of experience you can burst or blaze away if you burst is a normal nominal shot burning normal ammo no no big expenditure and uh, um, reasonable chances to hit and if you have more than one experience you can also snapshot. A snapshot is a very short burst, slower, uh, lower chances of hitting, but it's very few ammo. So we are going to go for a normal burst. Oh, no, that was a nice hit. Actually, he's on fire. Cool enough. Okay, time to bring this guy out of the blue. Slight climb. level 
Okay, I can go with a follow shot. Why not? I really w would want to shoot this guy now because this one is on fire. If you are on fire, you have two choices. Actually, three. You bail out. Uh, you good your engine totally. I mean, you kill your engine and you turn yourself into a glider to kill the the fire, or you keep on going. But if you keep on going, you risk exploding. Uh, the fire can make your plane explode or can go away on his own. It's James Bassett. So we have another shot here. Not as effective as before, but still good enough. I'm going to level up, leave this guy alone, he's very damaged. Well, 37%, but that's structural. When you get damaged, you get more reports than that. You can get your tail sort up, uh, your ailerons not working, your engine totally destroyed. So we don't really know exactly what that guy has other than a fire, and that's already big enough. Let's drop a little bit of altitude. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. And reverse with this guy. Mm, yeah, like that. This guy is risking it. He's not failed. But I'm going to keep behind the guy that interests me, which is this one. Now let's enter a slight dive here. Like that. This guy has not moved yet. He's banked this way. And I don't want to risk that. I don't want to risk getting caught by that guy, so I'm going to do a climbing turn here and bank the other way. So we are climbing here and then we will be able to go the other way. Wow! Nice! We ended with a pretty nice shot in our hands. No hit, but again, we are sitting behind him. So that maneuver paid off. The roll rate in this game, as you can see, is extremely 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 useful this one is going to dive a little bit fire 69 that's a huge stone oh god these guys are tough 83 percent on fire and still not blowing up really okay keep on going with this guy don't think i i'll be able to no I'm not able to, to get another shot on this guy, so let's do a climbing high yo-yo, in fact. Now, with this, what we are going to do is enter a slight dive and then do a reversal with a spill test. Dive minus two. This guy hasn't moved yet, but... Ooh, this guy is doing nice job. I'm predicting all the time where they these guys are going to be. I was actually trying to get a proper um, position to do keep on tracking this guy, but this other crossed me was so nice uh, to give me a 61% hit probability. So I'm not going to say no to that. Uh, okay. Flexion shot, and we get this in one shot, and this guy is still burning. Why? <laughs> but still, that working like a charm. Okay, let's go and finish the job. Uh, plus nine. This is much lower than this one, but yeah. He's at 277 miles per hour. Come on, explode already! Fire for half an hour. Jesus Christ. Okay, he's banked left, uh, uh, right, sorry. So I'm going to bank right, just in case. Setting full suit behind him. Much lower, but still we can follow him. Okay, here we go. Zoom climb towards him. Wow, this guy is so dead. And finally, he went down. So yeah, that's this game. That's uh, how you do it. That's how you um, fly for, for, for Wolf 590s. So results.
well, thank killed both of them. And that's how you do it. I mean, this is uh, a pretty useful tool because all you have seen there are ACM, climbing turns, climbing di uh, um, turning dives. I mean, what's that? High yo-yo, low yo-yo, spill tests, loops, vertical reversals, that's ACM energy management, um, rolling your plane to match the the, the other plane movement, etc, etc. So believe it or not, I think that if you play this game, which is Abandonware, if you look on Google, you're going to find it. Uh, I, I, I actually had the CD of this, of this, uh, of this game. Um, but if you look in Google, you're going to find uh, abandoned war versions of this of this uh, game. You simply have to uh, unload it and play it at, at your at your content. I mean, it's totally free. Uh, it's based on Windows. Works perfectly fine in Windows 7, so you can give it a try. Uh, this helps a lot in 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 getting yourself ready for for um, then playing a simulator because. You actually have to energy fight to win in this game, or to turn fight, depending on the plane. You have to play your plane to your. Uh, uh, you have to play your plane to its advantages, and those you can, of course, take a look at which they are here. All planes have a description. All planes have tactics, etc., etc., etc. So well, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had fun. I hope you like this video. And by the way, if you want a special battle with, between any of the planes, you can see here. These are the Germans. These are the Americans. And these are the British. If you want to see a two v two. Just tell me and I'll pick the planes you, you choose and see if we can do a battle. 2v2 tops, because 4v4 you can see a 2v2 game drags on and it's pretty long. So, well guys, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you had fun and as always, thank you very much for watching and see you later.